Hi engineering janta I am Vaibhav Shukla and I'm here today because my telegram my whatsapp has been again flooded with the queries related to the online assessments related to the coding questions how to attempt them how to approach them how can be a correct solution deduced out of the problem how to figure out what exactly the problem is asking while studying the problem statement so to answer all of that to give you a hang of practice for the coding questions which can appear in deloitte nla i decided to make this video fine so to answer all these questions i'm here and you'll get your answers in this video but before i dive in deep go ahead follow us on these social media handles so that you never miss an update related to deloitte nla because we'll be posting out on these channels also top 3 comments today get prep insta prime subscription for free so do not miss out on that chance because this can be a gold mine how it can help you i'll explain you don't worry so straight away i'll dive in to the first question which is a chocolate factory is packing chocolates into the packets the chocolate packets here represent an array of n number of integer values the task is to find the empty packets which are represented by zero of chocolate and push it to the end of conveyor belt fine so here it is clearly written that conveyor belt is actually array what you need to do is say that this is array okay and n is basically the size of array fine it is the number of integer values this array can hold now you have this array as an example and these zeros which you can see are representing the empty packets all you need to do is produce an output where non zero packets or the non empty packets are written first once the non empty packets exhaust then there are empty packets which are written ab simple baat kya hai problem ki pehle sare non zero integers aa jaye aur fir zero aa jaye that's it for example if 8 is the size of the array then firstly all non integer values should be placed and then after that all the zeros should be placed say that there are five non zero values in the array of 8 fine so in that case initial five values should be non zero rest three values should be zero itna sahi hai bahut simple problem hai ye dekho agar ye eight compartments hai okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and another one eight so ye eight compartments hai 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 inke indices hain what you need to be careful of is that all these values say five values are there 1 2 3 4 and 5 these five values are non zero fine so here should be the non zero values and then three values should be zero or if you take even this example then 4 5 1 9 5 all these are non zero values then the rest of the portion these were five elements rest three places are left these should be filled by the empty packets okay the whole point is empty packets should be pushed at last initially i should see non empty packets or the non zero values आसान सा काम है बहुत इजी है हाउ टू सॉल्व दैट आई शो यू नाउ दिस इज दी प्लस प्लस कोड इंप्लीमेंटेशन आई टेल यू अप्रोच इफ यूर समबडी हुज नॉट कंफर्टेबल विद सी प्लस प्लस यू कैन सॉल्व दिस विद सेम अप्रोच इन जावा और पाइथन और एनी ऑफ द लैंग्वेजेस दैट यू प्रेफर ओके नाउ इनिशियली वी कीप दिस पोर्शन एज द नंबर एज द साइज ऑफ द एरे फाइन नाउ दिस इज j which is another integer variable which we have declared we'll use it in future in the code so we'll see fine initially what you're doing here is take the size of array okay here you're taking the size of array fine and then you initialize an array with all the zero values say that i take initially 5 as an input so what you'll do is you have this array where there are five compartments or five places space for five integer values here because this is an integer array and you're initializing it with zero values so all of the values are zero in this array why am i doing it you'll see but remember this is a way of initializing an array if you haven't studied it if you don't know it go ahead watch my free video on youtube channel on prep insta i have specifically made a video on array where i have shown you how you can initialize it okay now coming further 
we apply a loop a for loop with an integer variable i which is the counter variable here fine till it iterates the whole array basically n is 5 so till i less than 5 so it will iterate the whole array from 0 to 4 it will go right and at every execution i will increment now firstly you will take the input of array so from user what i am expecting is you take input first of all of the size of array then you take the array and for that if you carefully see here it was written that input of each element is separated by new line so what you need to do is while taking this input every time the input can be put like this 1 0 3 4 0 so these are the five elements of the array okay these are the five elements of just a minute five elements of array okay so once they enter what i need to do is increment the j only when you encounter a non zero value now see carefully what i am trying to do is i took the a array j is initialized to zero initially a of zero is being executed okay i'll take some other color which is more visible to you let me take this yellow color so for a of 0 what will happen is if a of 0 i gave it 1 as the first value so i enter 1 here right now it will check if a of 0 or a of j is not equal to 0 basically the first element of array if it is not equal to 0 then it will increment j otherwise not what basically it is doing is this is the array right every value is initialized as 0 now i changed the first value here and it is not valid for first value only it is valid for all the values i changed this value to 1 now what it will do is j is pointing here so this if condition is to any element which j is pointing check whether that element is 0 or not if that element is 0 then do not increment this if this element is zero for example when j is pointing to this i'll show you how it is working right now it is not equal to zero so this piece of code will execute j will increment and j will start pointing towards this particular element okay and then again this loop goes on i increments i becomes one now in that case this is the particular value which is now to be inserted i insert zero here then again this condition would be checked this time the variable or the value to which j is pointing is actually zero so this condition is false while j is pointing here right while j is pointing at index one at this point of time this condition becomes false so this will not execute and hence i will increment but j will not so j is still here now you see even if you had zero as your input the input is not actually stored why am i saying so now if you take this value and try and insert it this time the value would be inserted at this place only because j is still pointing to this j is still pointing to the one now what will happen is the three would be stored at this place because j is still pointing to one it did not increment after the first value what happened was firstly when j was pointing here j was zero then it got incremented because first time it was one so this was true it executed j became one now j is pointing to 1 but it was 0 which we encountered here so this could not execute and hence j could not move further j is still pointing to 1 now you got another value to store 3 3 will be stored to a of 1 it is still 1 j is still 1 so it will be stored here okay now once it is stored here 
again this will execute because this condition again becomes true now. Now this condition again becomes true and hence this works so j will become 2 ok. Now j starts pointing here fine j starts pointing here. Now once it starts pointing here you encounter 4 similarly 4 will come here in the similar fashion as I explained now 4 will enter here again after checking this j would be incremented j starts pointing here and now you encounter 0 again. So this time it will not execute again there is no value with you so this time this loop has completed its execution fine because it has to run for 0 to 4 so for 0 to 4 it took all the values all the indexes right. Now after running this loop you have another loop which we have for printing out the array that we stored. Now if you carefully see your array is already what you wanted all the non-zero portions are stored here all the zero portions are stored here all the non-zero values are initially written and after the non-zero values there are the zero values fine. So you simply iterate it from zeroth index to fourth index zero i less than n i plus plus and you iterate this whole loop to print this array you basically do the c out command and then you print every element. So what you will get as output is 1, 3, 4, 0 and 0 fine. So this is quite easy thing. Bahut asaan sa code hai. Hua sirf itna hai ke as soon as you encountered a non-zero value you stored it. When you found a zero value you didn't store it. You didn't increment any index. That's it. Itna hi hua asaan hai. Jab zero mila to usse store nahi kiya. Jab non-zero mila to store kiya. That's it. Or initially array initialize ki zero values ke saath. Bas, itna hi hai. Okay. And to show you that this code is working, I'll go ahead. I have it in my online compiler. So see, here on prepinsta.com compiler that we have, I have an example for you where input is 5 is the initial number of elements that you will have. 80906 are the elements that I'll store and now I'll run this code just a minute I'll run this code and once I run this you have 896 and 00, 0 which is basically non-zero packets or non-empty packets at one side and the empty packets are the last of the conveyor belt quite easy. So this can help you a lot while solving these questions you know how to approach break down the problem break down the problem in simpler terms think in the terms that i have to put non zero values at one side zero values at one side simple okay also i was telling you about prep insta prime and why is it so important i'll show you if i go even in the trending courses i guess see with the effort of day and night our team has built this deloitte nla online course for you so that at a single place you find all this this is just one question that i showed you here in the coding section if you go you can practice from basic coding see the problems see the number of problems and to the intermediate coding you can practice everything arrays sortings every technique that you can find here strings basic and intermediate coding basically has arrays and strings and number coding and basic coding involves simpler programs as compared to intermediate coding. So here you can have enough practice, enough problems to deal with through which you can practice yourself, you can equip yourself with a problem solving skill and that will help you a lot in the Deloitte NLA exam, fine. So this buying or this enrolling of course doesn't bring this course on only, it basically brings you the entire prep insta prime at your platter. Basically you have 200 courses for yourself. For example, in this Deloitte NLA, if you enroll here, what you have is this whole prep insta prime at your platter. You will have every single course, you can access every single course, you can study, you can upskill with data science, data analytics, you have end-to-end -end projects, you have tracks here, see basic coding track, intermediate coding track, competitive coding track. If you enroll into our Deloitte NLA online course, you have access to all these courses which are there. 
fine you have access to these tracks specifically there is a track for big four companies which is for pwc kpmg deloitte ey and you can practice yourself you can see various kind of problems there various kind of preparation techniques are given there and they can benefit you fine you can have end to end interview preparation and same is happening in deloitte nl see end to end deloitte coverage deloitte nl coverage has been done here from quantitative ability to cs fundamentals to interview preparation and in interview preparation you see this puzzles guesstimates resume preparation group discussion everything is covered and there is a sale going on if i'm not wrong but to even help you with this what i can tell you is you can use a code so that this becomes more affordable for you because that's every time a concern for a student so what you can do is you apply this code i'll give you this code see you apply this code shukla 10 okay you apply this code and you'll get some more discount and that will help you to buy this particular subscription because every time a student goes to buy a subscription his single aim is to study and for that it's my responsibility that i try and make it best for you fine so this is to make things more affordable more in range for you fine so there is another question here where joseph is learning digital logic subject which will be for his next semester he usually tries to solve unit assignment problems before the lecture today he got one tricky question the problem statement is a positive integer has been given as an input convert decimal value to binary representation toggle all bits of it after the most significant bit including the most significant bit print the positive integer value after toggling all the bits basically this is written in a language which confuses you because that's how a test is made tough for the maximum competition fine so what it's saying is that the constraints given are that the number should be between 1 to 100 all you need to do is say you put 10 as the value input was 10 so basically this is a decimal value now you convert in binary value which is 1010 fine this is binary representation of 10 now you toggle all the bits toggling all the bits means make the ones as zeros and make zeros as one so basically when you toggle you get this now convert this toggled number this toggled number is basically 5 0101 this is representing 5 the decimal of 5 is written as 0101 in binary fine so you need to produce this integer as the result okay as simple as that now this problem is a homework for you go ahead practice look for the solutions if you don't find it if you aren't able to attempt it then you can look for the solutions but first sit with a paper and pen try to solve this problem because i have already explained you what you have to do all you need to do is think of an easy optimized approach through which you can solve this okay that's it in this and that's all for today believe me if you're practicing well if you're dedicated nobody can stop you from clearing this exam in next video i'll provide solution to this as well so don't worry about that but if you're somebody who knows your peers your juniors your seniors who are in need of this information go ahead spread it for free okay remember one thing keep doing good without any expectation good will come back to you in multiplied forms okay So that's all for today. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you.